indeed a wise choice. Masteries for my playstyle are fairly straightforward. We're going to begin by going down the Ferocity Tree. Uh, we take 5 points of Sorcery for increased ability damage. Then we move down and take Feast. Uh, this is a Mastery that I didn't used to take. Uh, before 7.10 I used to take Fresh Blood. Um, I enjoy that more for harassing with auto attacks because it has a pretty short 6 second cooldown. It is something you can use in some matchups, but I chose to go with Feast in most matchups because Heimer lost a lot of health regen, so this helps keep you healthy in lane. Uh, next we have Natural Talent, it's pretty straightforward. Some people will take one point of the Spell Vamp and Lifesteal. You can do that, it's personal preference, um, either is fine. Lastly in the Ferocity Tree I take Battle Trance. Um, I find this better than Double-Edged Sword because Heimer's kind of always dealing damage in lane. And it's basically the same 3% increased damage, but without the drawback of taking 1.5% extra damage. Again, personal preference, it's probably not a huge deal if you go for one over the other. Some players might even go for Bounty Hunter. Really all depending on your playstyle, but I like to take Battle Trance. In the Cunning Tree, I uh, take 5 points of Savagery. Um, it's obviously to make less hitting a little bit easier. Uh, if you're playing Support Heimer, you can go Wanderer, because you don't really need the extra damage for less hitting. Um, I like to take Assassin for the 2% increased damage. Some people will take uh, Secret Stash for the improved potions. Again, personal preference, not really my thing, I like the extra damage. Um, next I take 3 points of Meditation and 2 points into Merciless. This is just something you have to get the feel of, um, and this might be different depending how you're playing Heimer, if you're maxing W over maxing Q. Uh, if you're a W maxer and you're harassing in lane, uh, you're probably spending a lot more mana than someone who is maxing Q and using the rockets less in lane. So you might find you need more mana, you might want to take a couple more points, or if you you know, play a couple games, if you see that you're sitting on a big mana pool and you think you're wasting points into this, you could take one off, put another into Merciless and play a game, see how it feels. Just experiment a bit. Uh, <clears throat> after Meditation, we take Dangerous Game. Pretty self-explanatory. I do think Green Father's Gift is an option if you're playing top lane. You wouldn't use that in mid lane because you can't really step into brushes that often. Uh, this really just comes down to the matchup. I, I like Dangerous Game. Most people do. Uh, Green Father's Gift can be good against some melee matchups where you're going to get in a lot of uh, auto attack harassment. And you could take Bandit if you're playing Support Heimer. I think some people even take Bandit if they're not. I don't really agree with that. I mean, personal preference. This is a great thing about Heimerdinger, is there are so many different and valid ways to play him. No, my way isn't right. Someone else's way isn't right. It's just what you like to play, and you can make it work. Next we have Intelligence. Uh, that gives us 5% CDR and raises the cap to 45%. I think this is better than what amounts to about 4 points of magic penetration at level 18. Um, basically, you want as much CDR as possible with Heimerdinger because you always want to have turrets up to either replace ones that died or reposition new ones. 
And now with your abilities being linked to the laser charge, the more cooldown reduction you have, the more abilities you can use. The more abilities you're landing, the more lasers are coming out. So it's just more damage overall. Uh, lastly, Thunder Lord's Decree. That... You know, I wish Thunder Lord's wasn't as good as it is. Because I really do feel like Storm Raider Surge would be a great alternative. Because you deal so much burst damage that it's going to be going off often. So I think Storm Raiders is actually a valid um, mastery you could take. Um, Thunderlords, though, I mean, it's just with your rockets being able to pop it on one cast, it just feels too good. It's nice extra damage in lane when you're harassing them. I do, I do think there is a place for Storm Raiders, though. If someone tells you they play Storm Raiders Heimerdinger, don't laugh at them. I think it's actually not bad. Uh, moving on to runes, my rune page is a little bit unique. Uh, not oh, not really unique, but it, it fits my playstyle. So we have 10 AP from uh, Quince, and we have 20% CDR at 18. Now why did I do 20% CDR? You'll see later in the itemization section that I will get 20% CDR from Morellonomicon, and I don't really like to buy uh, other CDR items and I'm not going to get into that here I'll save that for the other section um, the other things are pretty standard HP per level I like that over armor um, even if you're against ADs because HP is just universally useful I, I think it's better most people would agree I think uh, magic penetration marks I think are pretty standard you could go for hybrid if you're in a matchup where you will be harassing with a lot of auto attacks. Could be a tiny bit more damage that way. I don't think it's a big deal either way though, so just, you know, your preference. Whatever you want to do. Regardless if you want to max rockets or turrets first, the first three levels of your skill order are going to be the same, no matter what your playstyle is. Your first level, you're going to want your turrets, because you will get bullied around in the lane if you don't have them down. Um, they'll give you the movement speed to weave in and out and throw some auto attacks. They will put out some damage. Um, the second level, you're going to want your grenade. The reason for this is the grenade is a lot more reliable, and in many uh, matchups easier to land, uh, more reliable for charging up your lasers. If the stun lands, or if the grenade lands, not just the stun, if the grenade lands, you charge up your lasers, and you should have three turrets down, that's a lot of damage at level two coming out. Uh, last, you want your rockets. This is so you have another ability to charge up your lasers. If you are in a situation where there's an opening to land a stun and minions aren't in the way that are going to absorb some rockets, you can potentially get off uh, two sets of lasers. And at level three, this is almost enough to kill someone outright, if not make them flash away. With the nerfs to turret base damage, the cooldown being changed to a flat 20 seconds and having the ability to soar three at rank one, Along with the rockets getting a reduced cooldown of a second per level, a lot of players, and perhaps rightly so, thought it might be best to start maxing rockets first over turrets. Uh, as we discussed in the previous section, this is another matter of personal preference. If we take a look at the math quickly, the difference between rank 1 turret and rank 5 turret in the beam damage is 40 versus 120. Now that's per turret, so if we have 3 down, the difference is 240 damage. And then if we land both of our abilities, these stun and rockets, as a follow-up, we can get two sets of lasers to follow. So with uh, the difference between rank 1 and 5, this becomes a total of 480 damage. With rockets at rank 5, the damage is 324 versus 108 uh, at rank 1. This is also assuming that you're landing all five rockets. You're not 
spreading them out and missing a little bit of damage. So the difference between rank 5 and rank 1, again assuming you hit all your rockets, is 216 damage. Now, you do get reduced cooldown, so you can fire the rockets off in faster rotation, and this could potentially make up for the difference in damage, and more rockets hitting would mean more lasers firing. It's all very close. I think the numbers are actually pretty close. And I think it comes down to what your matchup is and how you want to play it out. I feel that in many matchups where you would max your Q first before these changes in 7.10, I feel you would want to continue maxing turrets against those types of champions. These are mostly the, you know, fighters and tanks in the top lane that you would lane against. Uh, there were a number of matchups before 7.10 where you would actually still max your rockets first, even though there was great incentive to max turrets because of the numerous uh, buffs you got per rank. Um, so I, I think it's it's valid to max both, really, depending on how you want to play out the game. Uh, any matchup where you maxed rockets before, you would do it in this patch, and it's even better. Any matchup where you maxed turrets before, you could do that too, and it's arguably better too, because you get more burst damage from the lasers coming out. Another reason I like uh, maxing turrets first is in a lot of instances in earlier levels when you don't have much CDR, even with the lower cooldown of rockets, you might not be able to get off two rotations of rocket in a single fight if you're getting ganked. You know, Heimer is a very squishy champion. He puts out a ton of damage, but he dies very quickly too. So uh, those fights when the jungler comes to gank you, they can be over in five seconds win or lose. So your rocket cooldown might be lower and that might seem appealing in a in a matchup where you can poke safely, but if the enemy has hard engage and they decide to fight you, the higher damage from your beams could be a little bit more reliable and help you win 1v2s in my opinion. I've seen it go either way. Uh, I think both are perfectly viable choices. I mean, I've said this a million times this video already, but it's personal preference. If you want to max rockets first, I don't think you're wrong, uh, but I don't think maxing turrets first is necessarily wrong either. It really depends on the matchup and what your expectations are. So we've got a little bit of uh, game footage here. I'm gonna go through this for about four minutes, just to give you an idea of the early laning phase. So I'm putting down the three turrets, and as you can see, he went to contest right away. He took a bit of damage, I took a smaller amount of damage. He managed to kill one of the turrets before backing off, not a big deal. Uh, we replace it, and we're basically zoning him out here. He realizes it's probably not a good idea, and he's uh, just backing off. Um, so. What the beginning of this video actually didn't catch, but if you go back and look from the very beginning, there was a turret placed at my blue buff. And what my general strategy is, I will place a turret there to act as a ward of sorts, and I will place two turrets in lane. And if the enemy starts to get aggressive and they're going to fight, two turrets is not really strong enough. So what I will do is I will place the third turret, which will get rid of the one that was acting as the ward. So generally at level one, there isn't a ton most uh, matchups will do to you. Um, so you're just gonna clear the first wave. It's usually pretty uneventful. And the first minion you kill on the second wave is gonna make you hit level two. So we wanna start basically moving up the line of scrimmage here. This is the important thing when you're playing Heimerdinger. You have to have a feel. See, we land the stun there. Good damage because we had the turrets in position. You have to have a feel for where the minion waves are going to collide, uh, 
how you're clearing them. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to tank a little bit of damage. This turret was low, it was going to die anyway. So that's not a big deal. So we basically prevented the minion wave from coming all the way up, in which these two bottom turrets probably would have died if we didn't do that. So we use the W for a little bit of wave clear here. And now we're pushing again. My team was chasing down the Syndra here. I believe they get her without me, and then I walk back to lane. You need to be careful about leaving the lane, uh, because if you don't get anything out of it, you can fall behind in XP. If the uh, if you miss a few minions, you will lose lane pressure and let your opponent kill your turrets. It didn't happen here, but it can happen. So as you see there, uh, I knew his dash was on cooldown, so to go for that last hit he was going to have to walk up and auto-attack it. Playing Heimer is... it's almost less about knowing your own champion and more knowing the enemy champion. Which is just, it comes from experience. Either you have to have played against them enough times to understand what they're going to do. Uh, I would actually recommend playing, if you're having trouble playing against a champion, I would recommend playing that champion. Learn their cooldowns, learn their ranges, learn their damages. All of these things will help you fight against them better when you have a better understanding of exactly what their limitations are. So, this lane is not too, uh, too exciting. And the Renekton matchup is one that's generally pretty easy for Heimerdinger. Especially if the Renekton doesn't get jungle assistance, which he doesn't in this clip. Um, so you still are the lane bully that you were in 7.9. Uh, now, to go to uh, the Rocket Max verse, Oh, I do get ganked here. Let's see what happens. Exciting. Alright, that was actually a pretty decent play. So what we did there was... We flashed away right as he was stepping into the bush to create enough distance where he uh, can't jump onto us. And um, what ends up happening is my team gets a kill on the other side of the map because we drew jungle pressure by playing aggressive like we were and they don't get anything out of it. So this is basically the key to Heimerdinger. It's either get kills and just straight up win your lane or little victories like this where you're you know ahead in cs you're just bullying the opponent you're drawing the jungler to come kill you but they don't these are all things that you should be looking to do we spent a lot of time discussing the turrets and how they're supposed to be used in lane uh, we're not going to go too into depth on rockets and the grenade, as these abilities are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'll go over basic usages. Uh, so your rockets are obviously going to be for poke. In addition, they now charge your laser. Um, and you can use them for wave clear. They're not the greatest for wave clear, because the way the rocket works is the first rocket does the most damage. Subsequent rockets that hit the minions do smaller damage and get absorbed. So if you, if the minion wave is not uh, low HP to begin with, a high HP minion could absorb multiple rockets and prevent them from the rest of them from going through and dealing damage to the rest of the wave. So you need to be very careful about when you throw the rockets. You don't want a high HP minion to end up absorbing them all, and then one cast kills one minion. It's not very efficient. Um, the stun, you need to be careful not to use it for wave clear and lane. Uh, a good opponent will know that your stun, the, well the grenade, is linked to your laser uh, generation. So if they see you toss out a grenade for wave clear, uh, they know this is their window to go in on you. So they should take advantage of that. So you never want to use your stun just for wave clear. 
if you're attempting to actually hit the enemy champion to trigger your lasers and deal damage, that's one thing. That's good. Don't use it just for wave clear. You will give your opponent openings. Um, grenade is obviously used for stunning, so if you're trying to pick someone off, that's one purpose. If you're running away, you know, you can stun them, or at the very least, uh, land the grenade and slow them. Very basic usages. Knowing when to ult and which ult to use is something that separates good Heimer players from the great players, in my opinion. Um, this is something even I struggle with on occasion, and you'll see other high elo Heimer mains, you know, make a mistake here and there. Oh, I should have used this one, I should have used that one. Uh, it really, you just gotta play a lot of games, and you're gonna recognize situations and know this is the one I need to use here. And again, this is actually another area where different Heimer players will have different tendencies as to which ult they value using in a situation. I'm going to go over some of the basic usages when you should use them, and if you, in your, you know, hours and hours of gameplay decide this is not for you and you want to use your alts at this time, well then you can develop your own playstyle and play accordingly. But I'm going to go over the basic ones that I like to use. So we're going to start with the turret. Um, there's a number of uses for the ult turret. Uh, when you're tower diving someone, you can basically plop that thing down and it, it causes a lot of panic because they see the turret and they're like, well, do I have to leave my turret now? If I do that, I have nowhere else to run, I'm going to die. And they just kind of end up dying. So that's, you know, during tower dive, it's great to throw the, uh, the ult turret down. Alt Grenade can be useful as well, it really depends how much damage your team has, uh, what kind of follow-up you expect from, you know, if you have someone else diving with you, assuming you're not alone, you need to think about these things, not just your abilities, think about what the enemy can do, what your allies around can do if you can land a stun with an Alt Grenade. Uh, but sticking with uh, Alt Turret for now, another common use is rushing down Baron. You would put down your three basic turrets, and the ult turret, and <laughs> Baron will go down very quickly. Um, in team fights, the ult turret is a pretty safe option as well. You can put it... You can try and place it in the middle of the fight. It, it's, it's very tricky. You, you want it to be in the middle of the fight, but you also don't want it to die depending on the enemy team comp and how much AoE they have and incidental damage is hitting it or you know if they have like a Nunu or something who just decides to eat it um, you know these are it's the thing I can't tell you which one to use in this situation it's not always a hundred percent this it's something you need to decide but if you decide that you're going to use the ult turret you want it to be in the action so you're gonna drop that down maybe take a few steps back to, you know, be in good positioning, and then you're looking to land your other abilities to charge up the laser, because the grenade and the rockets will charge up the laser of your ult turret as well. So it's very important to land your abilities in the middle of a team fight. Moving on to ult rockets, uh, there's really only two uses for this, for this uh, ult ability. It's for stealing Baron, or Dragons, or attempting to burst down a squishier target who's crowd controlled. So, you know, if you land a stun, and your you know, stun is on a, an ADC, or you know, a mid laner who doesn't have a ton of MR HP, you might be able to burst them down with the ult rocket. Um, there's really not many more uses for this, it's just pure damage and trying to steal objectives. It does a lot of damage to objectives. Um, 
definitely, definitely Ult Rocket is the best at stealing Barons. Moving on to the last option, Ult Grenade. Um, I would use this ability when you're flanking. So, you know, if you're if the enemy is grouped together in mid, for example, and you're coming down from top lane, and you're coming down the river, and they don't see you coming, and they're all grouped together, and you see that some of your teammates are nearby and ready to start a fight, uh, Ult Grenade can be a great option. Uh, especially now that in 7.10 it got buffed, it's damage, so it's not just... It, before it was mostly a utility thing, but now it actually does a decent amount of damage by itself. Uh, you can use it to chase down fleeing enemies. If you need to close some distance, it, it goes pretty far. Uh, the last option is... Sometimes an, an enemy will stay in lane, low HP, and they think... They think they're relatively safe, that they can dodge your rockets or grenade. They don't expect the ult grenade. So if they're low HP, like a third, maybe even half, depending how fed you are and how squishy they are, if you can land the ult, rock, uh, the ult grenade, which is not that difficult, you should be able to follow that up with rockets. Now this also goes back to before, with maxing Q versus maxing W, uh, this is a situation where maxing W is actually nicer because you get a good chunk of damage from the ult grenade and then you have uh, a high rank of rockets and that can be very lethal. So this is another good option for securing yourself kills. Itemization is another area where uh, different Heimer mains tend to vary. You could take 10 different Heimer players and see what they're building and you're guaranteed to see some differences. Um, there's less variation these days. You don't do the uh, the banner build, the Zerat portal build. The reason is Heimer's base damages were nerfed and his AP ratios were buffed so it's more important to get those AP items now. So all Heimerdinger players are basically going AP but the items they choose and how they get to their end game will vary. Some players prefer to build Banshee's Veil and Rylai early uh, for the defensive capabilities these items offer. Um, personally, I've been building as much damage as possible. Now that Heimer has control of when his lasers come out, he has more burst damage in a shorter window of time. And I've just kind of been embracing that and going for as much damage as I can and having a lot of success with that. So, starting item is Doran's Ring, two potions and a ward, pretty basic stuff. Uh, what I consider to be my core items are Sork Shoes. Uh, I'm going to go into a topic on magic penetration after this. Um, these are the only boots I build. Some players will prefer other things. I see CDR boots, Ninja Tabby sometimes, Merc Treads. I value the magic penetration, flat magic penetration. It's very hard to get. Um, first item is almost always Morellos these days. There are exceptions. Uh, sometimes you will need other items. We'll get into that in a bit. Um, now, a thing I like to do, and I don't see many other players do this, is an early Void Staff. And again, I'm going to get into the topic of penetration after this, and you'll see some num you'll see a lot of numbers. Uh, another reason I like it is because it allows you to go for early Barons. Baron has 70 Magic Resist, and the Void Staff will amplify the amount of damage you can do to Baron pretty early on. More on that later. Uh, now that Heimer has uh, much higher AP ratios on his Q, we're going to go for the early death cap. Um, then, lastly, we're going for Leandries. Uh, this item, I like it because we're, we're not making use of the burn all that much, especially since we don't have uh, a Rylize in our build, necessarily. You will get the slow from your alt turret and landing grenades. Um, so the Leandri will give you HP, HP is good, it'll give you 80 AP, it's a good amount. 
uh, and it gives you more flat magic penetration, which is one of our favorite stats. And you'll notice we also switch out our trinket for the sweeper. Uh, I prefer this toward the mid and late part of the games, as I like to uh, sometimes camp a brush and see if I can pick someone off. Uh, you, Before, long, long ago, I used to like having the pink ward trinket. Uh, I miss that thing. But uh, th this is basically the next best thing. This will let you clear a brush, sit in it, and hopefully kill someone. Now, getting on to the uh, last item slot, if you know, we have five items here. Uh, the last slot, let me first talk about uh, Hourglass. We're going to talk about Hourglass. Uh, a lot of people like this item, they like to get it early. I personally don't. Uh, 2,900 gold, what does that get you? 70 AP, 45 armor, uh, 10 CDR, and the active. I don't like the active in general, especially in the early game, because when you use the Zonias as a Heimer, during that time you're invincible, if you're getting ganked or something, since they can't hit you, they kill your turrets, and your turrets die easily. So all they've done is stop your damage, and they're waiting for you to come out of it, and then they'll kill you. There's some champions, like Zed, where you need it to counter him, and that's a situation where I think it's good early. But in general, I prefer not to spend the money on defense. What I would prefer to do is to spend 2,900 gold on a more offensive solution. Um, combine that with good gameplay, keep yourself alive, position well, and all that. You can really snowball the game in your favor. So, you know, it, it's a personal option. If you feel you can play and survive and succeed without the Zonias, I, I think that's the best way to go. Um, if you feel like you need that crutch, or if you're in a legit matchup that just straight up needs it so you don't feed, then yeah, go for it early. But, you know, I I do build it, but I prefer it to be one of my later items. And if you notice, my rune page was 20 CDR. It's because I'd prefer not to build that item if I don't have to. If I do plan on building it, if I see the matchup before the start of the game, I might use a different rune page with less CDR, because then you'll have 50 something percent and that's just a waste. Moving on we have uh, Rylize. This is another good item. A um, little lower on the AP compared to some of the other items. It, it's comparable. Um, the, the, the thing with Rylai is the slow. How many melees are you against? How... What is this slow really going to do for your team? Sometimes you're against like three or more melees, and that's a great idea. I would get it probably even earlier. Uh, sometimes you're against a bunch of ranged champions, and you know, Rylai is not going to do that much. It'll give you some HP, it'll give you some AP. The slow is not going to be that impactful. So I consider it a situational item. There are players who will always buy it, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's just not for me. Uh, moving on, we have Ludens. Ludens Echo. I like this item in... So if you notice, the first two items have a defensive aspect to it. Ludens has defense in the sense that it gives you movement speed. And more movement speed allows you to position better. And that in itself is a defense. Uh, but it definitely is more of an offensive item because it has 100 AP and it has the, uh, the unique passive of proccing Ludens Echo for more damage. I like to build this item if I'm in a situation I'm comfortable playing in and I don't feel like I need some of the previous items to survive and win the game. Uh, next up is the Heisendong special. Uh, he has been trying to sell me on GLP for quite a while now. Uh, I do like the item. I don't like the cost. It's, I feel like it's expensive. And you get 80 AP. You get a nice mix of stats. Uh, when I was trying this item to, to make it work, 
I was using a rune page that had 30% CDR at level 18. Because uh, I, I didn't want to have to build Morellos for CDR and this item. Um, there are definitely ways you can make it work in a build, and it's not a bad item at all. It's just, again, preference, and I don't hate the item, but I just prefer other items. Uh, you could lump in, I, I didn't list it here, but Rod of Ages is another one in place of the GLP. Pretty similar decision if you're just looking for a good chunk of raw stats, then you can go for that. So for a long time now, I was an advocate of buying a very early Void Staff. And I would buy the Void Staff more or less regardless what the enemy team was building. There could be situations where maybe one person's building MR. Maybe another guy has like Merc Treads. Nothing too heavy. But I would still do it. And my teammates would criticize me. Say, Heimerdinger, why are you building Void Staff? They don't have MR. Everyone has MR. Doesn't matter if you're building items or not. Uh, this is even more true in the recent patch that just came out that every champion gets some MR per level. So at level 18, they'll have 38, I believe it is. Um, so I've got some math here, a lot of numbers for you to look at. Basically, I'm just showing you different configurations of magic penetration items against various MR enemies you'll be fighting. So you'll see here that it's pretty easy to reduce them to true damage with uh, when they have 30 MR. Um, 50 is another common amount for you know squishier champions. 50 to 70 actually, because some people buy Hex Drinker. Uh, Banshees is getting pretty popular in a lot of AP champions. So dealing with carries who have 70 MR is not rare. Not uncommon, I mean. Um, so if you're just walking around with Sork Shoes and your 8 Magic Pen from your runes, and someone has 70 MR already from a first item Banshee Veil, they're going to have 32% damage reduction against you. Buying a Void Staff lowers this to 18%, so you're basically increasing your damage by 14%, not even counting the AP from the Void Staff itself that's scaling your abilities. Um, 70 MR is another important number to talk about because that's how much Magic Resistance Baron has, and anyone who knows me knows I like to take early Barons, and an early Void Staff definitely helps with this. Another thing that's worth mentioning is the type of champion Heimerdinger is. He's sort of like an anti-dive champion. He puts down his little field of uh, death and he says to the enemy, come at me. And the people who tend to be charging at you are the enemy frontline, who tend to have more defenses. So your job as Heimerdinger is usually to melt these people down to protect your other carries and once the enemy frontline is dead it allows your entire team to collapse on their backline. So while maybe the enemy carries don't have much in the way of MR, it still makes sense for a Heimerdinger player to go for magic penetration early. Heimerdinger has his share of bad matchups, as pretty much any champion this game does, but he has some that feel extra bad. And a lot of Heimer players will say to you know, the higher elo Heimer players, how do I deal with X, Y, or Z? Or Yasuo. Um, short of banning these champions, the best thing that you can learn to do is to learn the champion you're playing against. It isn't so much what you should be doing as the Heimer player, it's you need to know exactly what these champions are capable of. You have to put your yourself in their minds and you have to think, if I am this Yasuo, how am I going to play this lane? 
what abilities am I going to use and when? What are my movements going to be like? It, it can be very difficult. If you, if you were to take the best Yasuo player, I don't know who that is. Let's just pretend it's Faker. Could be Faker. Let's say Faker is playing Yasuo, and he is the best Yasuo in the world, and you, the listener, are the best Heimerdinger player in the world. If those two forces collide together, the Yasuo is going to have some innate advantages that make it much easier for him to win the lane, and there's not much that can change that. But now let's take a step back and realize you are not the best Heimerdinger player in the world, neither am I, uh, and you're not playing against Faker. Now. There will always be potential for you to outlane your opponents. When you lose a game, or you lose your lane, it's not because you played against Yasuo. It's not because you played against Syndra. It's not any of these reasons. It's you got outplayed. The opponent may have been playing a champion that gave him a little bit of a leg up, but there were definitely things you could have done better. And you're going to ask me, well, Vegeta, what are those things that I can do? The main answer that no one is going to like is a little bit crude, but it's get good. And what does that mean? How do I get good? It's like I was saying before, you need to learn the limitations of the enemy champion you're playing against, and what little window you have to exploit their weaknesses, even if you are the underdog here, they do exist, and if you keep practicing, you will be able to exploit them. Let's take Yasuo, for example. Yasuo is considered strong against Heimerdinger just because he's got his mobility, he's got his shield that gives him an opportunity to go in and take out your turrets while absorbing some damage. He has his wind wall to negate some of your damage, or all of your damage in some cases. Um, that said, he's not invincible. Uh, you can still harass him with auto attacks, you can still land abilities against him, you can bait out his wind wall. It's almost not much more different than Fiora's Repose. Uh, it just... It's an ability, and they have to time it perfectly. And the thing about Yasuo, since we're just going to keep talking about him for now, Yasuo has to play the lane very well. It's very easy for him to make a mistake, because you're always moving in and out, and if you get caught by something, Heimerdinger does have the damage to kill you. I mean, I've... I've done this plenty of times, I'm sure you have as well, where, yes, the lane kind of sucks, but it's like, oh, look, he made a mistake, and I landed a grenade on him, and he's dead. It happens. With 7.10 being out now, there's a lot of matchups that were bad previously that definitely no longer feel quite as bad, because you have the option to max rockets instead of turrets. Uh, this includes things like laning against Syndra, uh, laning against Orianna, who just will walk up and auto-attack your turrets and kill them. Um, you definitely have more options to play against these champions now. They don't feel quite as bad to play against before. Uh, a lot of the Sheen champions will still feel pretty bad to play against. Uh, Aurelia will still reset her Q off your turret sometimes if she's, you know, a little bit ahead of you. If she has enough damage to do that, then she can. Um, Champions like Swain and Vladimir, they're just going to sustain up all your damage, so you're just going to... The best thing you can do is farm. Don't try and kill these champions. Just farm and get to a power point where you can deal with them, <clears throat> or get out of the lane phase and do other things. Roam to other lanes, get kills, look to take uh, early Baron. Um, now that you have better scaling, you actually are a threat late game, believe it or not. You know, a lot of people, it's like, oh, Heimerdinger, he falls off. Not anymore, he does a ton of damage now. There isn't really some magic trick that I can just show you, and it's like, oh, 
Do this against that guy and you will win the lane. League of Legends is a game about using your time efficiently. You have... the game will last a set amount of minutes. It's gonna end at some point, usually around 30-35 minutes. You have the time before that to build advantages. You are supposed to see us in lane. You should try and get kills, try and get first tower. Get dragons, get barons. All of these things add up over time. So League can also be viewed from the opposite way. Instead of trying to build up these advantages, you can think of all of the mistakes that add up together. So when I say mistakes that add up together, think of how many times you're in a lane, the first wave comes, it's six minions. You got five of them. Alright, not bad. The next wave comes, you got five. The cannon wave comes, Oh, you missed the cannon. That sucks, but eh, it's alright, it's just a cannon. Next wave comes, you're busy fighting a little bit, you miss three minions. All of these things in a very short window together, they don't seem like big deals, but they add up. If you take a player, let, just take a, a good player, an LCS level player, let's use Froggen for example, because the guy always has ridiculous farm. This guy will have 300 farm at 30 minutes. That's a lot of gold. A good player, good player, having a decent game, probably has maybe, what, like 250? If he's having a good game. If there's a lot going on in the game, he's rotating lanes, other people are in his lane taking his farm. Maybe he has a, a 200? Something like that? The point I'm trying to get at here is time is money. Money allows you to buy items. Items give you power. Power lets you win fights, which in turn gives you more money and more power. So when you make these little mistakes like missing CS, it really is easy to dismiss. And it's really easy to move on from and think, oh, well, you know, it's whatever. But these things, they add up, and that's thousands of gold, even, that you could be missing out on from not last hitting properly over the course of a game. If it's a, you know, let's use 30 minutes again, if it's 30 minutes, I don't think it's reasonable to expect you to have a perfect 300 CS, but you should have something very good, like 250 or something like that, maybe. If you have... 180, you've missed 70 minions. Let's say they're worth 20, low 20s on average. It's uh, it's almost 1,500 gold you could be missing. That's about five kills worth of gold that you missed from not getting minions. And I'm harping on the minion thing a lot, but it's it's something that adds up. Like if you, there are a lot of champions, for example, that cannot deal with Heimerdinger. They can't kill him. If they try and fight him, they'll die. You know what these champions do, the good players on them? They just farm. All they do is try and get farm. They don't do anything to get themselves killed. And then 25 minutes, 30 minutes pass in the game. They have items. And the lane phase ends. And they can contribute to the game and their team. And they win. Now again, I know this is... Pretty much not what anyone wanted to hear. I was actually asking people, hey, I'm gonna make a guide, you know, what are some things, you know, you want to hear about? And almost everyone was like, oh, I want to hear about champion matchups. I want to learn, I want to learn how to beat the Yasuo. I'm like, eh, okay. And, you know, there's no magic bullet. You can you can beat a Syndra, you can beat a Yasuo, you just have to be the better player. You have to you have to have a better mastery of your champion and a good enough understanding of their champion and a good enough understanding of the game as a whole and when you put all these things together you will win. 
And that's really all there is to it. So this guide is almost an hour long. I really didn't intend for it to go that long. Uh, if you've actually been listening this far, I commend you. Welcome to the end. Um, I'm not really used to creating this kind of content. Uh, I didn't write any scripts. I didn't read from anything. As you could probably tell by the way I pause and I'm trying to think of what I want to say. Like right now. <laughs> um, so I just want to thank you for watching and listening. And I hope you've learned a few things that can help you out. Uh, I do want to make myself available to people who have follow-up questions or more specific questions that I didn't address here. Like, okay, okay, for real. How do I beat Yasuo? Like, I know that's going to be a question. Um, so, you can contact me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is xjito. Uh, I think I'm going to take up streaming a little bit more soon. Uh, I've been busy with school this semester. I had five classes. A little crazy. Uh, but summer's coming up and I'm only going to have two classes, two days a week. So I'll have a lot more free time. So I think I'm going to try streaming. You can find me there at twitch.tv slash ajido underscore. A-J-I-D-O underscore. Uh, you can add me in game if you want. So long as I have room on my friends list. Um, Ajito is my account on the North American server. And that's pretty much it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And again, if you have questions, feedback, any of that, feel free to let me know. Thanks, guys.